wild horse and his famous one-armed Indian wrestle. The chief challenges anyone here to the one-armed wrestle. Fifty dollars in cash. To get me out. There's holdouts, shootouts, and Indians on the warpath. Come see what made the Wild West wild.
bunch of cowboys and Indians? No, just the headliners. The Indians won't mind sleeping in the law, eh? Get away from me, little girl. Well, let me tell you something, mister. I don't want no actors in my hotel. I just had Pawnee Bill in the Far East show here. And they were chasing women up and down the staircases on horseback. And it ain't gonna happen to me again. Now get those crates and get out of here. Wait a minute. I'll rent it from you. $50 for the afternoon. No. $100. No. $100 for my sister Dolly. No.
you're going to have to keep sewing her on because folks will keep shooting her off.
see that sign over there? Yeah. Oh, holy. Now you don't. Holy jumping Jehoshaphat. That's the damnest thing I ever seen. Well, that was nothing. Throw your specs up in the air. Well, hold on. I believe you. Hey, how would you like to make five dollars? <coughs> For what? Well, you see, there's this big, swollen-headed skiff from the Wild West Show. I don't shoot people. Now, you don't have to shoot them. You see, every town they go, they challenge the local shot to a fancy shooting match. They do? Well, what is it? I can shoot anything he can shoot, and I'll do it on my head, singing old Suzanne. Well, all right, then. I'll put you up again. But you won't get nothing if you lose. Me lose? Ha <laughs> ha! I won't lose. All right, you stay here. I'll go tell his manager that I got a match for him. By the way, what's your name? Annie Oakley. Annie Oakley. Come on, Grandma. We're going to clean you up. How'd you get your nose so dirty? What's that you got there, girl? What's it look like? Be tell out of me. It ain't a rifle, is it? Ain't you got eyes? Ew, you got eyes. Me too. Honey, you know you shouldn't be playing around with an old piece of junk like this. You wouldn't like it if the damn thing exploded and blew your ears off, would you? Why don't you take this here back to your pappy, and get yourself a couple of knit needles. So long. Hey, you, mister! You reckon it would be safe to keep till this evening? It don't matter to me. I just don't want you to hurt yourself, that's all. I want to keep it long enough to win a shooting contest off a big swollen-headed stick from the Wild West show. You mean Frank Butler? They didn't say his name. But he's a champion. What's that? Why, well, he's the best. He was. Well, anyway, Butler wouldn't shoot against a girl. He asked him. We ain't got no choice. Besides, he challenged anyone. Anyway, I don't shoot like a girl. I shoot like a man. Pretty set to yourself, ain't you? But that I am. But as soon as I try to shine up the folks, I get as gawky as a scrub oak. Don't I? <laughs> well, I don't know. I've seen worse than you. You have? Yeah. Say, you wouldn't want to wait around, would you, to bring me luck? Oh, that big swollen head of stiff is going to need the luck. Just how you like it, so long as you stay. Because when I'm up there, with all them folks looking at me, I'll be looking for you. Uh, you'll find me. Hey, where are you going? What's the matter? Don't you like me? Oh, I like you fine, honey. You're just not a woman for me. I like the dainty kind, the kind that faints when she sees the mouse. Mean and I suppose when I see the mouse, the mouse faints. I like a simple rose. <laughs> Oh, my God.
opponent here. Is your contestant ready? Yep.
have been complaining that you left the Indians into the department and that they lit a fire to cook their supper. And not only that, but they did their laundry and hung it up at the emergency court. They even took the springs out of the upholstery to make bracelets with. He says they done over a hundred dollars worth of damage. What's come over you? What makes you do these things? Frank Butler, he's got her head turned clear around. Clear around. And who's going to pay the damn thing? I'd like to know. I'll pay them for you, Annie. Thank you kindly. Oh, you'd pay for that little sip if it was me and let me rot in jail. I bet ye would. You can't honor you, poor Miss Tate. I don't need you to take up for me. And you, Charlie Edward, when you made her Francis, is it you promised me a better part? And what am I doing? Acting on the stage, coach, hold up. And twice a day, she gets dragged around by the hair and an Indian scalps her. You're doing everything you can to make me, but you hate me. He sure does. Why do you hate Miss Tate? Why does everybody hate Miss Tate? <laughs> well, are you going to get me a better part? I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Had you selling lemonade and you drunk it? Had you taken cash and you took it? Couldn't poor Miss Tate be the old woman that gets stampeded in the buffalo herd? What? Or the one that gets tied to the wild bull? That would give her a chance to scream and yell and get paid for it. Well, that's the thing. Either that woman goes, or, or I, I, I stay. Annie, oh, what's the use? I apologize for little Jake and the girls for cutting loose the baggage car. If only they hadn't done it on a hill. Boss wants to see you right quick, Mr. Davenport. He's awful head well, up. What's the matter? St. Pawnee Bill's opening in St. Paul, the same night we open in Minneapolis. Why, that dirty sneak. Ain't that all right? Well, St. Paul and Minneapolis are only a spit apart. It's like playing the same town. Oh, Annie, I cut this out of the newspaper. It says something nice about you. About me? Sure. Thanks. It's a cartoon. Did you go to your home now? Didn't get no chance. Been practicing my fancy trick on my motorbike. How can I learn if you don't do no homework? You're going to learn me, little Jake, and you're going to learn me fast. What's Frank going to think if he knew I can't read and write? Oh, say, can you make this out? No, you've got to educate me. you got to educate me, Jake. I can't write myself yet. Oh, never mind. I wish I was as smart as you, little Jake. Say, can you make this out? Can't read that ring, I can only read my ring. Start here. Well, I know that word. It's the. Go on. The boy had a dog. Keep it going. The dog's name was. What is it, Jake? Sound it out. Fur and ink. Now that I did that, what the hell is it? Frank. Frank, that's a pretty word. Go on. The dog was Scrap. The, the boy's name, name was S T E. You know what doesn't work right in stupid lines of the book? No. It doesn't work. The dog, the boy's name was S T E P H E N. What is it, Jake? Joe. Joe. You know, he scratched Joe. his head a long time. Joe? Seems a lot for just Joe. Well, read the once on John's dog. The dog was scratch. God bless you. Did you catch cold? Oh, just trying to learn a little bit of reading here, buddy. Sure thick-headed, ain't it, Jake? Sure thick-headed, ain't I? Yeah, now you get onto the supper car and go and get your dinner. I read good. Joe, my dessert here. Get, get, get. Oh, it's just reading something about me in the newspaper. You want to read it? Oh, no, you read it to me. No, I mean, I want to hear how it sounds when you speak it. Uh, Mr. Butler's assistant, whose name is not on the program, performed only one trick. But she promises to become a fine marksman. Real nice in that paper man. Yep, people are beginning to notice you, Annie. Just the other day I talked to
Charlie to putting your name in place on the billboard. On the program, too? Yep. And I, I told him that I was going to let you shoot the egg off the poodle's head. Think you can do it? Can I? I can do it without breaking the yolk. Well, you do it in Minneapolis, then. Well, thanks, Frank. But i got a real fancy trick I've been practicing to surprise you with. Well, I'd like to see it sometime. What is it? I ain't talking. It's a surprise. Well, i like you to improve. But, uh... I like you to be ambitious, but it'll take time. All I want to be is a pink and white woman like the kind you said you wanted. Well, you're getting pinker and whiter every day. That ain't hogwash, is it? You know... Why don't we be partners? Uh, say it again. Why don't we be partners, butler and uncle? Yeah, why don't, why don't, I was thinking, why don't we become partners, Butler and Oakley? Oh, no. Yeah, I never wanted to be partner before, but now maybe I might. Oakley and Butler. Butler and Oakley. What's the difference? Well, you got to do it in alphabetical order. <laughs> Have you ever loved anybody? In? Someone who loved me back? Yeah. Then I ain't. But I heard tell about it.
something quick. You gotta help us. Emergency? You want me to pull this cord? Annie, please. Listen, Pawnee Bill's open against us in many hours. He's trying to sign out Sitting Bull, a famous Sioux warrior. You gotta get an opposition flash. Now, a, a woman who can shoot and look something like a lady is a novelty. We want you to do that stunt on the bicycle. Oh, gosh, I can't. I've been saving that to surprise Frank with. You can surprise him with it in Minneapolis. You think he'd like that? Sure, it's perfect. It's like a fairy tale. When he sees you step out in front of an audience in a beautiful costume with lights and music and you do this trick you've been saving just for him. Yeah? You're a moth-eaten little dame from the tall grass. He likes you a little. He likes me a heap. Has he ever asked you to marry him? Not yet. He ain't broke out in a sweat cold enough to ask me that yet. Oh, I'm gonna get him, Charlie. How am I gonna get him? That's what I'm trying to tell you. You gotta dazzle him. Drive him crazy. When he sees you step out in front of an audience, in a beautiful costume with lights and music, and you do this trick you've been saving just for him? He'll just bust out in that cold sweat. He'll be so proud of me. Sure. Now, you, you don't tell a word to Frank about anything. Uh -uh. Monday afternoon, he'll expect you to shoot that egg off the poodle's head. But you don't do that. Instead, you come out, do you, your trick on the bicycle, Save the show and marry Frank! Just like in a fairy tale. Shh. You sure he's gonna like it? He'll love it. Everybody likes surprises. <laughs> it's great, Annie, great. Come on, baby. We gotta send a lot of telegrams. Did you brush your teeth? Yeah. Then get up, Barb. Not yet a while. Sing us a piece. No. Every time I sing you to sleep, I wake you up. Please. 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 Oh, all right. But close your eyes.
box office. Make plenty of noise. Be sure you draw a crowd. Then do your act. After that, you bring them back here to St. Paul. If there's anybody left in uh, back here to Minneapolis, if there's anybody left in St. Paul, you get five. This way.
Greetings. You know Chief Chilling Bolt? Oh. Oh. Sure. Everybody knows Big Chief Sitting Bull. He defeated General Cross at the Battle of the Big Horn. And he's just been to see the President in the White House. And tonight he's going to be the guest of honor at St. Paul in none other than Bonnie Bell. Don't lose your place in line, folks. Take it off right over here. What can I do for you, old pal? Well, do you still extend the courtesy of the profession? Delighted. I want to see that new girl you come in your show. Delighted. Mac, my boy, take our guests and seat them in my private box. Fine, fine. Come along, city boss. Good face, girl. Wait till you see her. Mm -hmm. Wait till you see her. Mm -hmm. Thinking of joining up with Pawnee Bill, Chief? Sitting bull on the way home from Washington. What were you doing in Washington? Sitting bull visit great white father. We talk Indian land trade. They certainly gave you a bad shuffle on that land, didn't they? Can't fire it, can you? Nothing will grow too much oil. <laughs> just, just oil? Geez, that's tough, Chief. How are you going to live? You can't eat oil. Selling oil. Selling 50,000 barrels a day. 50,000, eh? Well, what can I lose? Listen, City Bull. What does an Indian need? No. What are you going to do with all that money? Listen, Sitting Bull, what are you going to do without all that money? What does an Indian need? No matter how much dough you got, you can only wear one blanket at a time. You trap your own furs, you make your own jewelry, and for two bucks you can cover yourself with feathers. What are you going to do with that money? Sitting Bull, no put money in show business. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, Chief? Think of all the fun you could have. Party, champagne. Uh, are you married, Chief? No. Well, we'll give you, have you got a girl? We'll give you a girl a job in the show. Now, let's see now. For about 20000 we could let you... Sitting Bull live by three rules. No eat red meat. No get feet wet. And no put money in show business. How the hell did we ever get this country away from land? Oh, better start to get fixed, you're on after the Rough Riders. Bicycles all shined up, waiting for you. Good. Keep a hit. Uh... Ain't got much time. Hey, hey, me. Have I ever got her all that time? Off the bed. Little Jake, go get Frank. Yeah. Ain't you exciting at him yesterday to post the Frank up his gun today about a big picture of you? Yeah, go.
Now, honey, I've seen you do that poodle trick a dozen times. I know, but today I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm gonna. I mean, when you see me out there with all them lights and the people and the costumes and the music and all, you'll, you'll just. What will I do? You'll be so proud of me, you'll just bust. And then, like the end of a fairy tale, you're gonna ask me to do something and be somebody, and I'm gonna do it and be it. Honey, I could ask you that right now. No, not now. That ain't the way I planned it. Well, all right. You meet me here after I get off. Yeah, and you can take your time and ask me slow like. Minnie! Oh, 
warrior law. Go on. <laughs> Did you ever see an audience go wild like that? Did you see Silly Boy? He fell out of the seat twice. You know what he wants to do? To a doctor into the Sioux tribe tonight. I tell you, that girl's worth over a million dollars. Uh, Frank, hey, what are you doing? Wait, that's it. Dottie saw this Frank on immediately. What are you doing here? You're on. No, I'm not. You expect me to pull that 4th of July celebration on just one horse? Now you what know the what hell are you trying to do to me? Now you know why she has her picture plastered all over town. Fine girl. Don't blame Anne. She only wanted to surprise you. She wouldn't cross you. Well, she did, didn't she? Here, I expect to see her come out, shoot, pop an egg off a dog's head, and she comes out with the damnedest bunch of fireworks I ever saw. She played you for a fool, Frank, a little sneak. Shut up, Dolly. I'm the biggest sucker in the world. I was crazy over that girl. Damn near married her. I thought she was sweet. Simple, too. That's a good one. Simple. In two weeks, I'd end up being her assistant, probably cooking for her, too. So you three got your little heads together. Fine, smart bunch of double crosses, the three of you. Frank! 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 Oh, there we are. Oh, there's an old Indian hot hooking it around the big tent after me. He keeps yelling something. Did you see me? Were you surprised? Gotta hand it to you. It was the biggest surprise of my life. I knew you'd like it. Now all of you get out of here and leave us alone. What can you Cecilia? Tanya Wakacha. Tanya Wakacha. Tono Wakacho. 
Never mind, Annie. You still have shot the whole world. Yeah.